let's discuss about the process of excretion which takes place in human body excretion is an important process because lot of waste materials are produced during the metabolic reactions in the body there are several excretory organs in our body but mainly here we are considering the urinary system let's find answers for the following questions what is meant by excretion it is the removal of excretory products produced during metabolism what is meant by metabolism all the biochemical reactions that take place in the living body collectively are known as metabolism metabolism is divided into two types anabolism and catabolism during anabolism complex compounds are synthesized from simple compounds here energy is stored during catabolism breaking down of complex compounds into simple compounds take place energy is released in this catabolism as an example we can take catabolism of proteins inside the liver forming urea and uric acid what are excretory materials waste products that are produced during metabolic processes are called excretory materials excretion becomes very important because it helps to maintain the internal environment at an optimal level it helps to regulate blood pressure volume of blood as well as blood ph value this prevents damage to the body because of chemical imbalance there are different excretory materials and there are several organs which are responsible for the removal of these excretory materials carbon dioxide and water vapor are removed from the lungs in the form of exhaled air urea uric acid salts and water are removed from the kidneys in the form of urine urea uric acid and mainly sodium chloride and water are removed from the skin in the form of sweat in addition to these there are bile pigments released from the liver in the form of bile by products the main organ that carries nitrogenous waste is the kidney why don't we consider fecal matter as an excretory product the reason is fecal matter is undigested materials during food digestion digestion is not a biochemical reaction which takes place in cells therefore we don't consider fecal matter as an excretory product as kidney is the main organ that carries out nitrogenous waste removal here, here we are going to learn about urinary system the main parts of the urinary system are pair of kidneys pair of ureters urinary bladder and the urethra 
In blue color you can see the renal vein which is divided from inferior vena cava and a branch of the aorta is the renal artery which is represented in red color. Filtration of blood takes place inside each kidney. We will have a look at the summary of the process which happens inside kidneys. Blood with waste is taken through renal artery. This carries oxygenated blood which is mixed with nitrogenous waste. Filtration of blood takes place inside the kidney and the filtrate which we call as urine is taken to urinary bladder through the pair of ureters. After the filtration the remaining the oxygenated blood but without impurities is taken out of the kidney through the renal vein. Then we'll have a look at the longitudinal section of kidney. The outermost part is the renal capsule and inner to that there is the renal cortex and this area is known as the medulla and you can see the medullary pyramids in that area and this, these regions are known as the calyx and the ureter begins at the renal pelvis in addition to that you can see the renal vein and the renal artery In those pyramid regions, we can find the basic structural and functional unit of kidney, the nephrons. There are about 1 million nephrons in one kidney. This diagram shows the structure of the nephron and such nephrons are located inside the pyramid areas and there are several number of pyramids in one kidney. We learn about the structure of a nephron. The renal artery is shown here and renal artery is further divided to provide blood into the nephron the blood vessel which takes blood into the nephron is known as the afferent arteriole which begins with capital A and when we consider the area of cross section of this afferent arteriole, it is somewhat high. When we consider the area of cross section of the efferent arteriole, which takes blood away from the nephron. The blood vessels get coiled and form a structure known as the glomerulus and that glomerulus is situated inside the Bowman's capsule. Then the tubule which carries the glomerular filtrate is known as the proximal convoluted tubule proximal convoluted tubule
then the descending part of this proximal convoluted tubule is known as the descending limb and it forms a loop like structure which we call as the loop of henle then the ascending part of this tubule is known as the ascending limb blood capillaries are associated with this loop of henle then this tubule forms the distal convoluted tubule in this area and a number of distal convoluted tubules get open to this collecting duct this is the structure of the nephron what we call as the basic structural and functional unit of the kidney for the filtration of blood this structure becomes very important then we are going to learn about the process of urine formation which is associated with this nephron if i repeat the parts of the nephron this is the renal artery it divides into afferent arterioles this is the afferent arteriole and that gets coiled and form the glomerulus it is inside the bowman's capsule filtration takes place here and that glomerular filtrate is collected into the proximal convoluted tubule then you find the descending limb loop of henle and there are a lot of blood capillaries associated with this structure and this is the ascending limb then the latter part is known as the distal convoluted tubule that those distal convoluted tubules are open to the collecting duct then all these collecting ducts are open to the pelvis of the kidney the process of urine formation consists of three steps first one is known as ultrafiltration second is the selective reabsorption third one is secretion first we will consider the ultrafiltration which happens associated with the bowman's capsule there the afferent arteriole carries blood into the nephron if we consider the diameter or the area of cross section of the afferent arteriole it is greater than that of the efferent arteriole this is something like a pipe with a high diameter takes water into a tank and a pump a pipe with a less diameter takes water out of the tank as a result of this a high pressure is created here the glomerulus has a high blood pressure because of this the diameter of the efferent arteriole is smaller than the diameter of efferent arteriole because of this high pr pressure blood gets filtered through the wall of glomerulus and the inner wall of blood capillary filtration of blood takes place this process is known as ultrafiltration the efferent arteriole further divides and 
form a network of blood capillaries inside the Bowman's capsule. That is what we call as the glomerulus. After the filtration, the glomerular filtrate is added into the proximal convoluted tubule. If I repeat, during ultrafiltration what happens is the filtration of blood. This happens because of the high blood pressure inside the glomerulus. During this filtration, except blood plasma proteins and blood cells, most of the other substances get filtered and they are added to the glomerular filtrate. Therefore, the glomerular filtrate contains water, glucose, amino acids, vitamins, medicine, ions, hormones, and urea. Remember, plasma proteins and blood cells are not filtered O. The next process is selective reabsorption. During selective reabsorption, glomerular filtrate undergoes selective reabsorption and urine is formed. Here, most of the constituents in glomerular filtrate get absorbed again into blood. That is why we call this as the selective reabsorption. The substances present in the glomerular filtrate are selected and absorbed again. Therefore, this becomes selective reabsorption. This happens mainly associated with the descending limb. Here, about 90% of water, all glucose, amino acids, vitamins, part of the salts, little amount of urea and uric acid, medicine or the drugs taken, are reabsorbed into blood. Nearly 95% of glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed. In diabetic patients, not all glucose is reabsorbed into blood. Therefore, part of glucose is released with urine. That is a symptom in diabetic patients. In a healthy person, all glucose is absorbed into blood. The last process is secretion. During this process, some of the materials in blood capillaries which are associated with the nephron are secreted into the tubules of nephron. The materials are Hydrogen ions H plus, potassium ions K plus, ammonium ions NH4 plus, creatinine, medicine, and vitamin B. This creatinine is a byproduct of muscle metabolism. It is formed due to the breaking down of creatinine phosphate.
after the secretion urine is removed from the body because urine is released into the pelvis or the renal pelvis and it that is transported along the ureter along the ureters into the bladder inside the bladder this urine is temporarily stored according to the need of urination this urine is released out of the urinary bladder here it shows the selective reabsorption process which happens associated with the descending limb the percentages are shown here blood flows out of the kidney to the renal vein composition of urine of a healthy person is given here there is about 96% of water about 0.2% of salts a same percentage of urea very little amounts of uric acid and creatinine are present in a diabetic patient in addition to these there is little amount of glucose as well that is all about the process of urine formation if we summarize there are three main processes ultrafiltration selective reabsorption and secretion during ultrafiltration blood gets filtered inside the bowman's capsule due to the high blood pressure except plasma proteins and blood cells all the others are added into the glomerular filtrate during selective reabsorption about 95% of glomerular filtrate get absorbed again into blood during secretion some of the materials in blood capillaries associated with the nephron are secreted into the tubules of nephron that is what we call as the secretion along with all these secreted substances urine gets collected into the collecting ducts and all these collecting ducts are open to renal pelvis the ureter starts from the renal pelvis the pair of ureters carry this urine towards the urinary bladder urinary bladder stores that urine temporarily inside the bladder and that is released on requirement then we have to discuss about the diseases associated with urinary system there are a number of diseases associated with urinary system here we are considering only three first one renal failure it is the weakening of urine filtration process in nephron the reasons may be infections caused by microorganisms heavy metals like arsenic and mercury and various medicinal substances which are taken continuously and chemicals like carbon tetrachloride so this is a common condition in sri lanka especially in the north central province lot of farmers are 
Undergoing this disease condition may be due to the usage of excessive agrochemicals. The basic symptom of this disease is oedema that is due to the accumulation of water and salts in the tissues. These fluids can be accumulated in the near the ankle area and even in near the in the lungs. Because of this collection of fluids, the blood pressure increases. pH of blood decreases due to the acidic medium created because urea and other excretory materials are accumulated in blood. By taking immediate treatments, this condition can be cured and we have to lead a healthy lifestyle to keep the health of kidneys. If treatments are not taken immediately after the symptoms, this can the condition can be worse and it will be converted into the condition what we call as acute renal failure. This may occur within 8 to 14 days. Then the kidneys do not have the ability to filter blood as usual. Therefore, this filtration is done by a machine. This process is called dialysis. When both kidneys are failed, a healthy kidney from a donor should be transplanted. This is not that simple and it will consume a lot of money. Therefore, it is the responsibility of all of us to maintain a healthy kidney. For the proper maintenance of healthy kidneys, you need to drink enough water and the usage of these agrochemicals should be minimized. Bad food habits also will lead to the diseases associated with urinary system. The next condition is known as nephritis. Here the kidneys are swollen due to infections or toxins. Infections in ureters and other changes that occur in the body are reasons for nephritis. During this condition the glomerulus and the uriniferous tubules are affected. Due to the damages occur in glomerulus, the volume of blood flow through it reduces. So the amount of urine formed is also decreased. Therefore, the waste materials will be remaining within the body. This becomes toxic. Sometimes due to damages that occur in glomerulus, the filtering process is affected and as a result, red blood cells can be passed into glomerular filtrate. In the normal condition, you learnt that plasma proteins and blood cells are not added to glomerular filtrate, but due to the damage caused to the tissues, Blood cells can also be filtered to the glomerular filtrate. Similarly, proteins also can be filtered due to the loss of these essential proteins. Strokes can also occur. So this is a condition in which medical advice should be taken immediately.
otherwise this will end up with the death of a person next condition is known as calculi this can occur both in kidneys as well as the urinary bladder here crystallization of calcium oxalate takes place these calcium oxalate oxalate crystals block the ureters and a huge pain is occurred the removal of these stones can be done by drugs or a surgery and in grade 10 as an application of ultrasound waves we learn that these stones can be crushed by a technology known as lithotripsy here you are shown the uh, kidney stones or the calcium oxalate crystals by using ultrasound waves these crystals are crushed and these small pieces can easily pass to the ureters and they will be removed to urine feeding habit of a person is also a reason for those stones for example if you take tomato which contains oxalic acid and sprats or small fish which contain calcium ions if this uh, practice is continued the person can come up with calcium oxalate crystals or the kidney stones therefore proper food habits also should be practiced and if you postpone the urination that will lead to the increase in concentration of urine and that will end up with calculi in kidney and bladder therefore for the maintenance of a healthy urinary system you need to drink enough water and urination should be done on requirement